Happy Vlogmas! Welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My Santa hat clashes with my dress and I am doing the crazy thing and trying Vlogmas for the first time. I have no idea how this is gonna go. 24 videos is a lot of videos to do in a row. So it's possible I'll do like three and then just run out of steam. But let's see. So today, by the time you're watching this, it's the 1st of December! It is now socially acceptable to be excited about Christmas. Something I've been doing on my own in private since like mid-July. So what better way to kick off the first day of December and Vlogmas by giving you all of my best Christmassy fun recommendations. So I did a video not too long ago called Let Me Entertain You, which is just a list of all of the fun like movies and books and games, all of my top fun recommendations of the recent months. So I thought, why not do that again? Because that was fun, but this time themed specifically around Christmas. I'm drinking a chai tea. This is my first recommendation. Drinking a tea pigs chai tea and it smells so Christmassy, but it's too hot, I can't drink it yet. So while waiting for that to cool down, let's start with my book recommendations. The first book that I just can't not mention in a Christmassy video is The Night Before Christmas by Clement Moore. Obviously, such a cliche, everyone has heard of that book, but I just love it so much. We have a tradition in my family that we've been doing ever since we we're tiny and that we still do, even to this day, even though we're now 27 and 25, where my mum reads us that book on the night before Christmas. We all sit by the fire and she reads it to us and then at the end we run out to the front door and we look out the sky and we see if we can see Father Christmas. And we have this lovely illustrated copy of the book and it's just very sweet. So if you've never actually heard the full poem, because I guess some people might not know beyond Towards the Night Before Christmas and All Through the House, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse, are those even the words? I think so. It goes on from there. So that's my first book recommendation. I don't have it here because it's my family's copy. I don't have my own one. My dress is falling down. Okay, so that was an obvious one. So I have two others. Firstly, this is a book that I got two Christmases ago as a present. It's the Everyman's Pocket Classics Christmas Stories collection. It's just so pretty. It's such a lovely one to have out on display during Christmas. That's what I've done every year since I've had it. It's just had it like propped up on the windowsill because it's really sweet and lovely. And it's also got an amazing collection of stories inside it. My absolute favourite one, and I haven't read them all yet, but of the ones I've read, my favourite is actually the Anthony Trollope Christmas at Thompson Hall. And it's really funny, like unexpectedly funny. I loved that one. But it's got loads in here. It's got stories from Arthur Conan Doyle, story from Evelyn Waugh, Muriel Spark, Alice Munro. Really fun collection and look, it's just so cute all around. I love it. And then a fun Christmassy book is this, The Indisputable Existence of Santa Claus. So this is written by two mathematicians. So the subtitle is The Mathematics of Christmas. And it's basically this really fun, silly book. I am not good at maths. I loved it at school, weirdly. I was one of the weird kids that loved maths, but I haven't done it since and I've basically forgotten how to even add. Doesn't really matter, just like go with the flow. And they basically use maths to prove that Santa Claus exists and other fun things like that. So it's got stuff like the mathematics of Secret Santa, how to do that perfectly, the maths of wrapping presents, how to win at Monopoly. I haven't been able to make any of it work because as I said, not good enough at maths but I just find it really funny, particularly the stuff about proving that Father Christmas is real. I think that's great. So those are my recommended books this Christmas, and I'm gonna try and read a few more Christmassy ones throughout the month, so maybe I'll have some more to recommend later. But for now, let's move on to Christmassy movies. Oh, still too hot, still too hot. So I'm not gonna bother listing all of the classic Christmas movies that you've all seen. Obviously, I'm a massive fan. I love Home Alone, I love Miracle on 34th Street, I love Christmas, I love all of that cheesy shit. I love The Snowman, that's one of my favourites, so good. But you know all of those. So instead, I want to talk about a couple of movies. But firstly, a film that for some reason no one I know has ever seen, other than like me and my sister and my cousins, and then the friends that I've made watch it with me. And I don't know why no one's seen it, because it's got a very famous cast, it's this like brilliantly cheesy 90s cartoon, and it is called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's got Whoopi Goldberg in it, it's got John Goodman in it, it's got Debbie Reynolds in it. I don't know why this movie didn't get more famous. And it might be because a lot of people just seem to think it's really bad. <laughs> like when I looked it up online, it has really terrible reviews, but I genuinely don't know why. Cause like, yes, it's cheesy, but it's also fantastic. So it's basically a telling of the Rudolph story from the song. So the reindeer games they have in it are like the reindeer Olympics and they're really important. 
and Rudolph has his whole life, he's always been bullied by the other kids and he's been dreaming of taking part in the reindeer games and proving to them that he can be a flyer who pulls Father Christmas's sleigh. And it's got such brilliant quotes in it that my sister and I always quote each other. Literally we can like text each other a few words and the other one will just complete the rest of the quote. The most common one we quote being the three qualities that all the flyers must have which are courage, character and a heart that's true. Also there's the really cute thing that he says to his girlfriend. He has this crush on a little doe called Zoe and they become friends and and at one point when they're just friends, he says to her, Zoe, you make my whole heart glow. And it's just so cute. Oh my god, I love everything about that film. Anyway, I was telling you the story. So he finally gets to the reindeer games, he takes part in it, and he does really, really well. He's like the best one. He wins the race, but halfway through the race, he had got embarrassed because he was like having a fight with while he was running with one of the other mean reindeers. And when he gets embarrassed or stressed or anything, his nose, his red nose, glows. And that had happened, and it had put off the other reindeer who then had fallen behind. But he didn't do it on purpose. I'm getting really into this. And then the referee came over at the end and was like, you're disqualified for illegal use of a glowing red nose and takes his trophy away and it's really sad. And Rudolph is really upset and then he overhears his dad arguing with the referee, talking about that nose of his and he's like, oh no, I'm a disgrace and he runs away. And then Zoe goes to look for him and then she gets kidnapped by Stormella, played by Whoopi Goldberg, who's like the evil witch of the North Pole. So then Rudolph has to rescue her. It's just wonderful. It's only like an hour and 10 minutes. I seriously recommend this Christmas you get a copy of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the 90s one, not the like stop motion one, it's just the cartoon one, and you're welcome. You will love it. So that's my absolute favorite Christmas movie. I also always have to watch Sound of Music on Christmas, another of my best films ever. Not Christmas themed at all, but something about it makes it a Christmas movie. Also, you know what I realized recently is a Christmas film? It's Catch Me If You Can, the movie with Leo DiCaprio. I love that movie anyway. We watched it recently and like, it's always Christmas. Every time it flashes forward a few years, it's Christmas again. It's a Christmas movie and I never noticed. So I'm gonna be rewatching that. I only watched it like two weeks ago. I'm gonna watch it again for Christmas. And then some films that I haven't seen yet, but I'm excited for. Firstly, I am so excited for Mary Poppins Returns. It looks so good. Have you seen the trailer? Look it up. Dick Van Dyke is back. I honestly almost cried when I saw that he was in the trailer because I didn't know he was gonna be in it. I'd seen like the teaser trailer. I had no idea he was coming back. Also the cast is amazing. I didn't know that Meryl Streep was gonna be in it. Julie Walters is in it. And then the last name they showed was Dick Van Dyke and you see him and he looks so much like he did in the original. Like obviously not when he was playing Bert because he's a lot older by now, but when they aged him up to be the old guy at the bank and he does his amazing walk, whoever did the costume and makeup for him back then must be like, wow, I predicted the future because he looks just like that now. I guess he's probably wearing makeup again. I literally did not think of that until right now. Anyway, I'm so excited. I love Emily Blunt and I really love Lin-Manuel Miranda and also Emily Mortimer, is that her name? Who's playing the grown-up daughter. I really like her. She's in Far Bodies. I mean, Bright Young Things, which is one of my favorite books. No movies. And then the other movie that I'm really excited for is The Princess Switch with Vanessa Hudgens. So last year we had The Christmas Prince, which was so bad. Like I heard all of the hype and the jokes about it. So me and my sister were like, we have to watch it. It's gonna be really fun and cheesy and silly, but great. And it was just so bad. It was so much worse than I even expected it was gonna be. I mean, we loved it because we were making fun of it so much, but like, wow, that was bad. So I'm really excited for another one. This looks like it'll be just the same, but also it's gonna be like such a throwback. Some of my favorite films when I was younger, Parent Trap, one of my favorite childhood films. This looks like it's gonna have serious Parent Trap vibes. Also serious Lizzie McGuire movie vibes, where Hilary Duff dresses up as the Italian pop star version of herself. The Princess Switch is Vanessa Hudgens is like a normal American and she goes to be an au pair, is that right? I only watched the trailer once. And then she meets a fancy princess who she is also playing and they decide to switch lives and it looks like they're gonna fall in love with each other's love interests. It's gonna be so bad and so good and I'm really excited. So those are the Christmas season movies and now for the TV that you all need to be watching at Christmas. There is really only one TV show to watch for the whole of Christmas and that is The O.C. My favorite TV show ever. It is the ultimate Christmas TV show. It's the ultimate summer TV show. It's also the ultimate Christmas TV show. Gilmore Girls can have autumn, that's fine. Spring, I don't know what the fuck a spring TV show is, like Teletubbies, Easter Bunny or something. But Christmas belongs to the OC. Because Christmaca and all of the Christmas playlists, I'm gonna talk about them in a minute too. Seth Cohen loves Christmas as much as I do. He's probably the only person who loves it as much as I do. God, I love this show. Maybe not this season so much. Four was pretty bad. Three was also pretty bad. Let's be real, I just really love OC season one and two. Ooh, and now for some games. 
I love games and Christmas is such a great time to play games. Last year we learned a really fun one to play actually at the dinner table so it's great for Christmas lunch as long as you have a lot of people. You need to have a long table with lots of people so that you can split into two teams going down each side of the table and it's very simple but really fun. What you do is you put a wine bottle at one end of the table and a coin at the other end of the table and the teams on opposing sides of the table all hold hands in a row and they all have their eyes shut except for the first pair at the top next to the coin so one from each team who's the first in the row has their eyes open and you have one person who's like overseeing everything they're not in the game for this round they flip the coin if it lands on heads it's a race so only people who can see the coin know they have to silently squeeze the hand of the person next to them and then you pass the squeeze down the row and if you're the person at the end, next to the bottle, the second you feel the squeeze, you reach out and grab the bottle. I think you're allowed to open your eyes the second you felt the squeeze just to grab the bottle, so that you don't like send it flying everywhere. So really, really simple, and it's just a race to get the bottle first. But it's so fun, because also, you get so tense when you're the one watching the coin, that often you'll squeeze by mistake, and you're not allowed to say anything. So you're not allowed to be like, no, 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 I didn't mean it. You just have to watch the squeeze go down, knowing that your team are then gonna grab the bottle and lose a point. If you're the first one correctly to grab the bottle, you get a point, and basically how we do that is like, the people at the top, if your team wins, you all move up one space. So the person with the coin goes down to the bottom, everyone moves up, and it's just like a race to get the first person back to the beginning again. And if you lose a point by like incorrectly grabbing the bottle, you have to move backwards a place. That's it, that's the bottle game. That was a really complicated explanation, but it's really fun. And then for after dinner, if you like a board game, it's not really a board game, just a game that you play sitting down, I love Anomia. This is one that we found in the States and bought it and brought it over. I think you can get it here too, but I haven't really seen many people with it, but it's so fun. You have these cards and every card has a category and a symbol. And I'm not gonna explain the whole thing because whatever, that's boring, but you'll get it. But basically you just take turns having the cards in front of you. There's a range of different symbols that they might have. Oh, those ones match. That was a coincidence. So they have like all sorts of other symbols they might have. When your card matches somebody else's card with the symbol, it's a race to name something from the categories. So you name something from their category to steal their card, or they name something from yours, and then they get yours. <laughs> so bad at explaining games, but it's really fun. It just gets really silly. It's basically just like a race to name things from a category, and your mind goes completely blank. Like, sometimes the categories are really vague. It might be like, book? I've read a million books, and yet I can never think of a single book in the moment. And sometimes it's something like really specific and weird. So some of the ones in here, insect part, part of an insect, famous epidemic. Those ones are really like weird and niche. Or it might be like, type of cake. But no matter what the category is, it suddenly just gets so hard. I love that game, it's a really, really fun one. And the one we've got, we've got the party edition. So it's got six different packs of cards in there. So you can play loads of times, never run out of categories. And anomia is apparently the word for the feeling when something's on the tip of your tongue and you can't quite remember the name. Such a good name for it, because that's basically just what the whole game feels like. And then finally, some Christmas songs. And again, I'm such a sucker for the old classics. So I'm not gonna bother telling you about those. Everyone's heard Mariah Carey's Christmas song. Everyone knows the Wham song, the Band-Aid song. I bloody love them all. I'm a big Christmas cliche. But I do have four here that I don't really hear other people play that I really like. First up is Santa Stole My Lady by Fitz and the Tantrums. I love Fitz and the Tantrums anyway. I didn't even know they had a Christmas song until quite recently. But it's great. It's just jazzy and fun. looking at the YouTube comments now, apparently it was on an episode of New Girl, so maybe people will know it from that. I stopped watching New Girl a while ago. Another of my favourites I got from the Home Alone soundtrack, the Home Alone 2 soundtrack I think this one's in. So it is not an unknown Christmas song, I am not hipster enough for that, but it's just one that I don't really hear played that much and I love it. It's All Alone on Christmas by Darlene Love. See if you can recognise the bit of Home Alone 2 where they play it. And then my last two are from the OC Christmas soundtrack. I can't help it. After hearing them in the OC, I'm just going to love them forever. There's quite a few on the OC soundtrack, but my two favourites are Just Like Christmas by Lo. Like it's such a backgroundy Christmas song, like it's really just nothing special, but having it in the background just makes me feel cozy. And then the other one that I love from the OC soundtrack, which is definitely a bit more famous, is Maybe This Christmas by Ron Sexsmith, which is <laughs> lol, a great surname. Oh, doesn't it make you feel so nostalgic? Maybe this Christmas will mean something more. 
Maybe this year love will appear. Those are my lovely Christmas songs that make me feel all snuggly. So do leave me a comment with your favourite Christmas songs because I want to build just like the most mega Christmas playlist for myself ever this year. Here's my last couple recommendations. Firstly, I want to recommend a Christmassy booktuber. I'm sure you've already heard of her because she's great. But Lauren in the Books is one of my favourite people to watch at Christmas time. I don't know if she's doing Vlogmas this year. She did it last year and it's just so much fun to watch. She does it so well. And she's such just like a cosy, fun, lovely YouTuber to watch. So do go and subscribe to her. I will put her link in the description box below and she hosts these cozy reading nights I know she's gonna be doing a cozy Christmas reading night and I'm really excited because I despite having watched like every vlog that she and anyone has ever posted of the cozy reading nights have actually never been able to take part in one I'm always busy on the night that she does it so I've seriously got my fingers crossed that I will be free for her Christmas cozy reading night if not, I'm just going to have to cancel whatever it is that I'm doing because it's not going to be as important as taking part in the Christmas cozy reading night. And then finally, a video you should watch, just plugging myself here, but we just posted the Book Break Christmas gift guide. And if you want some great, if I say to so myself, Christmas present recommendations, do go and click. I'll post that below. So those are my Christmassy recommendations. Do give this video a thumbs up if you like the sound of any of these. And please do comment below with your own because I just love all things Christmassy, especially games. If you have any games recommendations, I'd love to hear about those. And if you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button below because I usually post videos every single Friday, but fingers crossed, if I keep up the stamina to do it, I'm gonna be posting videos every day for the next 24 days. Oh my, that sounds exhausting. But hit that subscribe button so you can come along on that tiring ride with me. See you next time.